Okay, we are up to part six, classic gaming part six. Here we are in this folder. Of course, you're watching this. This is the start file, which uh, the only thing I've done uh, since the last time was just added these two little snakes in here uh, that we created. Well, one of them we created earlier. And let's go ahead and save kind of our progress. All right, so we are going to call this save as. Uh, we're in the right, yeah, okay. Progress 10. Okie doke. And of course, that is right there. Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, make this little snake move. And how we do this, it's not going to be too different than how we moved uh, these things. Actually, it's just going to be identical. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to make a couple symbols here. All right. So uh, I want to. Make sure I get the my coordinates kind of equal to everything else in this little world that we've set up. So what I'm going to do is just take this right here and set it to zero zero. Okay, so that way when I select my little snake guys here, make them into a symbol, I'll have the correct x y z x y coordinates. All right, so we'll call this a uh, snake 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 moving. How about that? And I'm going to go ahead and just because it's easy to do. I'm just going to set up another symbol right now. Snake. Again, these names aren't too important. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and just delete that out because I don't need that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's zoom in a bit. Here's how I'm going to set up this symbol. I have I have, this is kind of my pose for the dead snake, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that right over there. I'm going to add a few keyframes out here, well, blank frame, or just insert frames, I should say, and I'm going to put a keyframe right there and just take this guy out of there at that point, okay, and then I'm going to take this guy out of here, so this will be my kind of dead snake pose, all right, so let's go ahead and let's call this uh, frame label dead, all right, and now... Over here, uh, let's see. I've, uh, if you remember, actually, when we created this little snake guy, we put a couple keyframes in here for him just moving along like that. So uh, I don't need to animate him there. Good thing is, is what I can do is I can set up a keyframe right here, which I'll use to uh, just flip him the opposite direction. Okay, so he'll just kind of go like this. And what I'll do is I'll set a little piece of action script up here just to stop him at that point. Okay. And actually the same thing will occur right here. Okay. And what I'm going to be doing is in the symbols above it, just controlling uh, which direction he turns. And I'll, what I'll say is I'll just tell the action script to just play. So it'll play forward when it needs to change direction. And then when it needs to change direction one more time, It'll just add this in here, go to, and stop one. All right. So then it'll just flip back. So this whole thing is just set up to just, you know, if it plays, it turns direction. And we can go ahead and put a stop action over here, I think. All right. Now, the other thing uh, I'm going to want to do is, uh, well, you know what? Let's, um, let's not worry about his hit area. Let's just go ahead and set him up with the same exact setup that we've been using for our little clouds. All right, oops. And it will go like this. Uh, we, we definitely want to use this. Oops, sorry, that's off screen. We want to use this uh, kind of like distance parameters. All right, so let's go ahead and type that in there. I'm going to change this to be 120, though. All right. So basically, when this clip loads up for the first time, it's a variable created called distance. All right. And now let's go ahead and double click into him. And right here is where we're going to paste in. Sorry, I should steal that code first. Right here, we're going to steal the code from this whole thing. All right. So we're just going to double click into here now. We will paste in this code and we give us some room to look at it. Okay. We can call this. Uh, now snake. All right.
right. And let's see, is there anything to change? I don't think so, as a matter of fact. So let's go ahead and uh, just see what happens. All right, there he goes. And okay, now notice that he doesn't really turn direction yet. So all we need to do is just say at this point right here, this dot play. Okay, and I believe that'll just turn him around. Okay, because we're basically just telling it to play, but you know, as soon as it gets told to play, it comes into another stop action up here, or it gets sent back, and that should. Uh, do us up pretty well for that. So let's see. Do, do, do. All right, he turns around, and let's just make sure everything is functioning perfectly. By yep. All right, cool. And of course, again, if you ever need to change, or if you ever want to change how far he walks off, you know, just uh, set the distance to something higher. Okay, and of course, you might need to move him back a little bit as well. But uh, that will do it for you. Okay, so now. Let's get into what happens if you uh, cross paths with this little snake guy. And uh, as always, this is, is going to be pretty simple. All we need to do is just create a little hit area, okay? So I'm going to just rename this snake art, and we'll call this hit area. And let's make ourselves a little 20 by 20 box. That's almost 20 by 20. Oops. Okay. So I'm just going to put this right down here. Okay. Uh oh. Having trouble. Uh. Okay. Um, let's put his action script on there. We will, of course, make this. Uh, Hit area invisible when we load it up. All right, so load. By the way, and apparently making things, uh, changing their visibility with the action script like this, is definitely better than uh, just setting the alpha down. Okay, you'd think they'd be exactly the same, but it does kind of make sense that they're not. Uh, okay, so that's taken care of. Uh, notice when we load him up now you don't see that hit area back there all right and now what we're going to do is say on clip event to frame give myself some space to work and in fact i need a little bit more space to type i think okay and as usual it is going to look like this this dot hit test root dot man dot man hit okay uh, what I'm gonna use though is a uh, our good old jumping variable okay if he's not jumping okay so if jumping equals false in that case you got trouble we're just gonna set the main timeline to play all right so the root timeline will just play at that point if he uh, encounters him while he's not jumping. And we do know what happens if uh, that occurs. For example, let me uh, move those over. So the root timeline will just play. It'll just go forward like this. It'll run into its little death zone here. And of course, this could be where you uh, put anything. You could just say, hey, whoops, you messed up. He's dead, you know. And in fact, we could just we could even show it right here. Let's see. Okay. Maybe we just put him upside down or something for right now. Uh, we'll know he's dead if he's upside down like that. So let's just see what happens. All right. So if you run into him, oh, he's gone. He's a goner. Let's give us a little bit more time though to view that amazing animation <laughs> okay uh, what is good about that though is uh, 
And probably what I should have done before is the same exact thing when I uh, created this little death zone down here. It, it does make more sense for me to actually just say root play, all right? And that way, this will just play forward. It'll run into, uh, you know, whatever happens here. But then, this is actually what controls where you get sent back to. So, for example, if we had this whole thing, uh, just kind of, for example, over here like this, if you'd made it to a second level, for example, anything over here, you know, anything on here, is just going to say, hey, root dot play, go forward and then it'll go into this area and this right here could be you know uh, level two for example it would try to go there alright so that's how you would create a whole nother level and not have to really f mess with any of the other action script that already exists again the kind of uh, the thing we want to do here is make it so that all these things function with you know, when the end of the at the end of this tutorial, everything's gonna work perfectly, no matter where we put it, no matter what level it's on. It's just gonna be pretty easy to uh, copy and paste stuff around. So anyway, let's get back to the task at hand. We definitely uh, just in testing that out, we realized that that works. So let's make it. Uh, let's make this snake vulnerable now. So all we have to do, I'm just gonna lock this layer so I don't select it. I've got this. Uh, the hit area selected. It is pretty simple now to just say uh, global jot jump, uh, whatever. True. <laughs> and in that case, we're going to say parent dot go to and stop dead. All right. And. Um, well, you'll see what happens. How about that? So if I jump on them, boom. Oops. You know what I forgot to do? At this point, when he dies, I need to get rid of that hit area. Okay. So take a look at him now. All right. So uh, that works, but the uh, dead snake keeps moving there. All right. So what we want to do, and in fact, he even somehow manages to come back to life. But uh, what we want to do is make it so when he dies, he stops moving, which is actually pretty simple. What we're going to set up a variable right here. Oops. Right here. Parent dot snake underscore alive equals false. All right. And that will control in a second uh, whether or not he moves. So anyway, snake alive. This is what we have to remember. We're setting up a variable called that, and we want to set it up within the parent up here. Okay. We are now. Oops. We're now uh, one symbol up the hierarchy, and a good place to uh, kind of initiate this uh, variable will be when it gets load it up. Okay, so we'll say snake live equals true. All right. And let's put a little note here. Controls uh, whether or not snake is alive for moving purposes. How about that? Okay. And so now all we have to do is just say if snake underscore alive equals True. Then we get to do everything as normal. Uh, obviously, if this equals false, uh, then none of that stuff will occur. So let's see. All right. So there he is. And kind of the cool thing about this is, uh, hey, look at that. When we return over here, he's still there. So we can kind of run off as much as we want. At least I believe. And uh, if I killed him, let's see. All right. You die now. Okay. So I can go crazy. I can make it over to this other little platform, this other segment. And hopefully, when I return, that guy is still there. And there he is. Okay. So, uh, amazingly enough, that works for us. All right. Now that we have that running, let's go ahead and just save our progress on it because uh, we definitely made some. Uh, 
good steps there. So we will go save as. Okay, now what I want to do is something that I didn't actually plan on when I was uh, kind of mapping out this lesson. So we're going to go a little off the reservation a little bit for me. And we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to double click into this guy right here. Okay, just, uh, just our man. All right, let me move this out of the way. Uh, this is where we've, you know, set up jumping and things like that and whatnot. All right, what I'm going to do is double click into him one more time alright so now he's just kinda of back down to his like artwork and whatnot starting at this frame I'm gonna paste in some stuff that uh, I kinda of just did on my own alright so just all it is is pretty simple it's just him with a little boomerang coming out alright so it's just goes out and it'll come back in alright so let's set up uh, how this is gonna work we're gonna Put a stop action up on this frame. And it always kind of drives me nuts when uh, I have just regular artwork like that on a layer with other symbols. So I'm just going to call this up. And still, how about that? Doesn't really matter, but just one of those things I like to do. Okay, so he's going to shoot out like that. And we're going to call this frame label, um, what will we call it? How about boomerang? Although now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even I don't even need to do that. It's just gonna go out. Okay. And this is just a stop action. Alright, so check this out. What we're gonna do is uh, set him up so that depending on the direction he's facing he can uh, shoot that little boomerang out and uh, let's see we need to give him a instance name right here because at this point he doesn't have one he needs uh, how about man let's call man 2 at that point All right. and remember right up here on the main timeline he's called man okay so down here he'll be man 2 and uh, if we point if we make reference to that we can tell him what to do in here and which will be kind of simple actually let's do this I'm gonna scoot him off to the side bring our uh, action script in here okay and right now of course uh, the action script I'm looking at is all that stuff that's uh, you know if key is down key dot right all those things so we're gonna add one more to our big pile of stuff here uh, I'm gonna say trigger the guys boomerang. Okay. And all we need to do is we're just gonna copy this, okay? Paste it down here. I'm gonna change this to space. I'll make the space bar be uh, what makes his uh, boomerang go forward. And all we have to do here is say, actually, I'm gonna steal this same little bit right here. I, I'm gonna only let him uh, shoot his boomerang out if he's on solid ground, okay? And right here we will say root dot man dot man two dot play. So I didn't actually need that uh, frame label I set up, but uh, let's go ahead and test this out. All right, cool. Ooh, let's get out of there. All right, now you guys might have noticed that if you press to the uh, left, all right, he just kind of goes right back to being uh, forward again. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, change that. It's about time, right? I'm going to set up a variable up here. Okay, right at the beginning of this thing. So if key is down, uh, to, you know, the right key, we're going to make it so that a new variable shows up called global dot facing direction. Again, I love these. Uh, Kind of obvious ones. I'm just going to make it be uh, negative one. Okay. Actually, I'll make it one. How about that? All right. And then the same thing down here. I'll just call it this time negative one. And just for notes on this, we'll say uh, monitor. Well, let's say variable to monitor.
if you know what, let's even say neg oops. We'll even go as far as to say negative one. Oops, negative one equals left. All right. Now what we'll do is go over here to this variable. I mean, not variable, but uh, our listener event. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll set this up so that if global dot facing direction equals one, okay, if that occurs, then this is fine. This will just uh, be like it was before. But this time, if it equals negative one, then we're going to tell our buddy here to go to and stop two. All right. And so that means doo -doo -doo, at this frame right here. Okay. We're going to just flip them about around like that. Okay. And by doing so, I think we are set up. So let's see. All right. See, now he's working that way. Now, if I hit the boomerang, boom, boom, like that. All right. Makes sense. Because this whole this whole symbol here that contains all this stuff is flipped around as well. All right. So let's just look at it one more time. And obviously we're going to make it so that he can shoot his boomerang at that guy. Okay. So um, one thing though that I noticed I had set up before was uh, all of these things right here where it says uh, go to and play, jumping to. These could actually be switched to stop. And I think it's probably better if they are. But let's just test it out. Let's see. You won't you probably won't see much of a difference, but uh <clears throat> When I was testing things around, I uh, I did kind of find a reason for them to be uh, set properly like that. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's go uh, deal some pain onto this snake one more time. Oh, actually, you know what we need to do? We need to go back into his little boomerang action. So let's get back up into here. And let's put a little hit area on this guy. All right. And I'm going to make it separate than the actual artwork for the boomerang. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to put just a little box here. And let's see. I guess 8 by 5 is about right. So we'll call this uh, boomerang hit. And let's give it an instance name. We'll call it the same thing, actually, boomerang. And all this needs to do is just kind of uh, motion tween across with the uh, boomerang itself. So I'll just move it out this way. Put a little motion tween in here. And you know what? For this guy, let's just go ahead and make him uh, alpha out to nothing. So like that. All right. Now, let's get back to our little snake. You know what? I'm going to do the same thing for this snake hit area. I'm kind of sick of seeing it. We know it's there. Okay. Uh, and, all right, let's click on it. So we just need to write this. In fact, let's steal all of this code right here. And this time, what we'll do is just take this part off of it. Okay, and we will call this man dot man two dot boomerang. Oops, I spelled it wrong. All right, so that should work. Let's test it out. Boom, you're gone, Snakey. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, good. Things are working out. Exactly as I planned. 
Okay, so uh, that's pretty cool. Let's do, let's see it one more time. Actually, let's try to just for experimental reasons. Let's try to hit him from the opposite side. How about that? So bang, nice. All right, now uh, here is something I kind of realized, uh, which I actually haven't tested yet. But check this out. We could make it so that this snake only stays somewhat dead. How about that? If as long as we tell him to, let's say go to and stop oh you know what let's let's play around like this let's make it so that if you bop him on the head okay if you just jump on him he doesn't stay permanently dead how about that so uh, in this case it's gonna say go to and play dead alright and which will mean we can take this stop action and uh, let's just move it over here alright and then at this point, uh, let's make this go to and stop one. And we'll also switch back our little uh, variable here to being true again. You know, it's so we can kind of test this a little bit quicker. Let's put it right there. Okay, and let's see what happens. All right. Oh, looks like uh, looks like we didn't tell our variable to do the right thing. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see what happens if we. Add that right there. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm just being stupid. Actually, let's take this off. Okay, and let's switch back over to here. I think that's all we need to do to make this work because this is always a little bit tricky, but when you set up a variable, okay, like I did here, uh, the variable kind of, in a sense, exists within this kind of uh, timeline, all right? So for me to uh, make mention of it on the frame, okay, uh, that would actually, I don't need to say specify parent or anything like that. So uh, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Oops, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't actually jumping on it at that point. Let's see. All right, hold on. Okay, there we go, uh, and now he gets right back up again. All right, so that so that actually works. Okay, so there we go. All right, so there that's all good and well. Uh, I I am noticing though that um, it it's kind of hard to tell when you. Uh, you know, because it's on the ground there, and you're not necessarily, uh, you know, sometimes if you've already made it to the ground, you're not really falling like that, or, or still in your jump pose, I should say. It's kind of hard to explain. But uh, that could actually all be fixed if what we do is we just set this hit area up a little bit higher, okay? So that way when we come down on this guy, so we don't have as many problems with it, see? And I can kind of even get him now a little bit better within shorter ranges. Like, well, it's hard to get him. There we go. So that'll 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 do us some good. How about that? How about I just give you some boomerang, huh? What do you think about that? Now you're dead. Uh, all right. So we need to um, do something else here. I think to finish off this uh, kind of entire series here. Uh, We'll deal with some sort of ladder or something like that to move around, and then we'll be done. First, though, let's uh, save this out to uh, another file, because we've definitely made some progress. And we are at 12. All right. Hopefully the last one. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this ladder thing here that I just promised. Uh, what I've done is just in a separate document, I've already uh, created the two elements we need. It's just a piece of artwork and a hit area behind it. All right, so what I'm going to do is just paste those 
right into here. Okay, and I think a good place for our ladder will be about that spot right there. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, I do want to try to position this um, like I've been positioning most other things in this document, just kind of on this 20 interval spot. And let's just go ahead and make that easier for me to select. I'm just going to put it on top of the ladder. And let's do this. What else do we need to do? Let's set this up. Let's grab a few other platforms. Okay. And let's see, let's make this 140. No, wait. Actually, what I'm going to do is take that out of there. Okay. And swap this in. And the reason being is if you remember with these bricks, this little hit area, this landing zone, it's kind of built into the whole thing. Uh, what I'm actually going to be setting up is I'm going to be making it so uh, when you enter into this little ladder realm here, uh, you don't actually want to have a landing zone, okay, because that kind of locks you down there. And I just realized this ladder is not really set up for it to be exactly, uh, you know, on the 20 increment stage. So uh, let's see, what else are we going to put here? Just, uh, let's just do a few more of these guys right here. Okay, and let's just do the same thing back this direction. Okay, and uh, similarly, we don't want to put one of those uh, landing zones up there either. Okay, so uh, what else? Oh, you know what? I do need to go and steal a piece of artwork that I've already made. Let's see, where is that at? Yes, here it is. Uh, it is uh, this little guy climbing. So we're going to at least give him a little climbing pose here. So I've just pasted this. Well, I'm about to paste it in to right there he is okay it's not too fancy but it'll work and I'm actually gonna put him off off uh, center a little bit he's gonna be up just a tad okay and let's delete this out and we're gonna call this frame climbing all right and the last thing to do is basically now just uh, program in the uh, actions for this hit area. Alright, so let's do it. So we're just going to say on clip event load. Okay. And as usual, we're just going to make the hit area invisible. By the way, the reason I'm not just doing this directly onto the uh, ladder artwork itself is because it's going to help us if uh, we have these like little kind of spaces above and below the actual ladder to uh, kind of, uh, I guess, relinquish the hit area that we're about to set up here. So kind of uh, what's uh, good for the eye is not always good for the uh, code. Because definitely, if I made my ladder only go up to, like, I guess there and start only about there, it kind of feels like, well, wait, can I, do I have to jump to get to that thing? We do want people to just be able to walk right up to it and uh, get to it. Or at least that's how I want things. Because remember, in this little universe, I am God. You are the programmer. You get to decide exactly how you want everything to be. So if you disagree with it, or if you want to go nuts and add something on your own, do it, by all means. It's your world. Okay, uh, I think I've got this uh, hit test set up. All right, so it's just the usual, not doing anything fancy there. All right, let's put some spaces down this way. And what else? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We are going to set this guy in motion okay, to 
go to stop climbing. All right, and you know what? We could go ahead and test that. So let's see when you get near. All right, there he is. He, uh, oops. <laughs> when he gets close by this thing, he, uh, goes to his little cli climbing pose. All right. Uh, of course, you've noticed that, uh, there's definitely some craziness going on just because, well, we've deleted out any of these landing zones. So basically, he started to fall there. Uh, what we do want to do, though, is set the, uh, gravity to false, which uh, it's kind of funny that I was thinking about that variable name that I think about it because it, uh, when you say gravity falls, I don't know, it makes me think it would start falling, but no, it just means that we're not testing for gravity. Okay, and uh, again on solid ground, is actually going to equal false now because we're basically saying, well, you're off the ground. Okay. All right. Now, so these are things that uh, are going to get run regardless of whether or not you are keying up or down. Okay. And now we're going to set those up. So we're going to say key is down, key dot up. Okay. So that'll be the first thing we test. And what we're going to do is uh, quite simply just tell root dot man dot y okay same thing equals itself minus five and over here on this side of things same deal all right just gonna add five to it so we're not he's not going up super quick he's just uh and of course, you can change those numbers. They'll make them go up and down uh, slower accordingly. And uh, let's give this a shot and just see what happens. We might have to adjust it a little bit. Okay, so let's see. All right, it goes up, and uh, when you uh, kind of let go, he goes down. And let's see. And by the way, you can just kind of at any time you can also just like walk off the ladder. All right. And I think the only thing that I'm going to adjust will probably be. Uh, his climbing pose. I'm actually going to make him pop up a little bit more. It kind of just like helps the whole illusion of this thing, I think. Well, you got to kind of make sure you're squarely on this thing and you're not, uh, you're like right in the middle of it, okay? Otherwise, you, you would stand the possibility of uh, being able to jump, okay? And, uh, all right, so you can kind of see that yeah, there's few kinks I guess but uh all right so this kind of comes on and get whoops all right there he is and mm. what's kind of funny though too is that cloud you know what I need to get that out of the way that's actually been bothering me for quite a bit okay you are going to move up in the world Now let's put this guy at 40. Okay, so now we should have no cloud interference. All right, so when you roll, you know, move over this guy like that, go down, and there we go. All right, uh, one thing to kind of figure out though is why was he jumping? Let's take a look at his code. Okay. Well, see, it's kind of weird because we are saying. If, uh, if you're if you're only if you're on solid ground equaling true can you uh, initiate a jump and yet let's see let's look at this again hmm I have noticed that sometimes it, it makes a difference where you put certain things on here so the order in which you uh, run through them. Uh, this might just be one of those things we have to kind of um, just deal with, let's say. Yeah, I don't, that's really weird. I don't really understand. Huh. He does, uh, when you get to the bottom of it, when you stop pressing up on this thing, you just keep pressing down and then kind of let go. He does drop a little bit further than he should, and I think we can... Uh, 
we can solve that if we just maybe move this a little bit. Let's give that a little move up. We do have to make sure that we make it see, look, gotta make sure he's, he can actually run into this area. So let's see. Okay, so right there he's able to get up. Alright, so let's see. And go up that way. Okay. Get back down. Hmm. Oh, well, you know what? That actually solved two problems for us, I think. Because, uh... Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Here we go. This needs to be just a little bit skinnier. Okay. Because I think what's happening is he's touching both the solid ground right here and, uh... And this ladder. So let's try this. Let's make this thing pretty skinny. Okay, yeah. Alright, that'll work. Yep, alright, that's good. Cool, alright. And you know what, he does drop a little bit too low when he gets off this thing, but hey, you know what, I don't even care, that's fine. Cool with me. Alright, so, um, let's see, what are we going to do next here? I think I'm going to keep playing. No, uh, the thing to do now is to basically uh, wrap up this whole series. I guess I do need to do something about sounds, so let me go collect a few of those. Uh, we'll add those in there, and uh, there shouldn't be much else. Okay, I've gone and collected a few sound items. Uh, and one other thing that's just playing around on my own, I found it's uh, better to use these uh, non-breakable platforms uh, by the ladder. And there's one other thing that you might want to consider doing, which is uh, double-click double in, get in here one more time. And Oops, that's out of the way. Let's see. Let's do this. What I'm going to do is take this little invisible landing zone. I'm going to copy it out. I'm going to duplicate the symbol. And as always, this is a little different than just copying it. So it's going to be a unique instance. Now I'm going to double click into here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. Just duplicate it one more time. Just call that two. And now when I double click in, I'm just going to chop this off. All right. And so now I kind of have a smaller hit area for that and I think if uh, run this through now things do run a little bit more smoothly when you uh, let's see oh, it might be a little bit too tall let's just find out when the character come back it comes back down at uh oops a little bit easier on it. Fortunately, you do have to be kind of like right centered right in the middle of this ladder to uh, get this guy to uh, run through perfectly. But uh, yeah, you can tell now it's, uh, it's a little bit better. And you could probably also, let's see, I actually haven't tried this yet, but I think, oops, I don't want to do that. If you take off those segments and maybe put this one over here, that might work kind of nice too. Let's see. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, you know what, for all I really know, you could probably use these these little platforms, uh, these landing zones throughout the entire document. It might, might work just as well. I don't know. I'll leave it up to you all to experiment a little bit. But anyway, let's do this. Uh, Let's go ahead and save this out. We'll go to lucky number 13. Okay, so... All right, the 13th version of this. Could be the last. All right, what I've done is, like I was saying a minute ago, I've collected some sounds, and I've actually already imported them into the library. If you ever need to import audio, just go to uh, Import, Import to Library. I think that's the best way to do it. And what will come up will be uh, your stuff in here. 
Uh, you can view by kind, actually, or can you? Type, yeah. So we'll get these right up all at the top here. And first thing we are going to do is uh, change their linkage properties. So if you right click on these guys or if you just have it selected and you go over here to linkage, you can uh, set that. Uh, this is kind of like, in a sense, uh, what we've been doing with every single movie clip where we've given it an instance name uh, so we could kind of communicate with it with action script. Uh, this is similar with uh, audio. We uh, give it an identifier. Uh, what you want to do is uh, click this right here and just both these settings are perfect. All right. And we'll do this. By default, it'll, it'll uh, just put in the name of the audio. Uh, if you just want to keep it simple, just, uh, I don't know, I usually give it something like that. Just the first part of the audio name. Okay, so that'll be its, uh, again, you can think of it as an instance name almost, but it's, uh, to, to be more correct, <laughs> a linkage identifier. But uh, here we go. We'll call this, that, and... Okay, last one. And of course, audio adds uh, just an amazing amount of texture to a game. It's, uh, you know, I've always said if it's a visual thing, you know, half the uh, entertainment is actually in the audio portion of it. And uh, you'll kind of, I think, be surprised just how much it adds to it just in uh, this little game. Because probably you've gotten pretty sick of playing it and... <laughs> So this will add that kind of nice final element. All right, let's do this. Uh, what else do we have to add here? Let's get uh, our action script editor open. And what we will do is this. We're going to create sound objects for each one of these. OK, so I'm just going to say uh, up here, sound objects for uh, basically playing. Oh, and one thing before I, I forget, because I probably will forget if I don't do it right now. In your published settings, uh, do this. Set, click this on, all right? Right now, each one of these fo uh, audio files is a uh, IFF file, okay? And those are a little bit heftier uh, bandwidth-wise, so uh, just to trim down the audio. If you go to override sound settings, it'll convert each one of them to an MP3 file. All right, so we'll do this. And you know what? You can also actually, if you ever go into uh, properties, you could go like this too. And, and actually, that might be better since uh, since we are playing them we're, uh, through the action script. This might be uh, more what we want to do now that I think about it. And I've kind of found that uh, MP3 files run a little bit smoother in uh, Flash than uh, some other audio types. Like I've noticed uh, WAV files will sometimes crash it a little bit if you pile too many on there at once. Uh, so we'll just cover all of our bases here and just go through each one. Okay, so that's ready. All right, now let's uh, type in. So what we kind of do is give each one of these a... Uh, variable name, all right, which will essentially trigger the sound, all right, and this is, for each one of these we're going to have to do this, but it'll kind of be a copy and paste job momentarily. All right, I'm going to call this variable jump underscore sound, all right, and now what I'm doing is attaching the uh, linkage name that we created in the library, all right. So let's just uh, look at both of these real quick. All right, so here was my, let's get use count out of the way. Can I? I guess not. OK, well, so there it is. That's the uh, linkage name, all right? And that is what goes right there, OK? And this was just something I you know, just 
created a uh, named on the spot. And all right, that's ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and set up. Uh, well, no, you know, we'll use that. Why not? So to use it, let's go ahead and find our jump meter. This guy right here. So on this uh, first frame, when he begins jumping, I've uh, well, actually, I forgot to delete that out. I've actually already added it. So. <laughs> We'll pretend I didn't. All right, add jump sound. And here it is. What you want to do is go root. Oh, yeah, right. And just start like that. Okay, and that'll do it. Uh, obviously, that was the variable name. Start, we'll begin it playing, and uh, let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Try to turn this up a little bit. All right, so there he is. He's making his noise. Now, let's do this. So that's pretty simple, um, and I don't even know if I will go through each one of those other sounds because uh, it will get kind of boring. Uh, let's let's change it up a little bit though because we'll do something different for our background sound. So let's just copy all this, okay? And we'll do change that to background. All right, that should be correct. Let's just take a look. Okay, that was my linkage name, BG, right there. That's the important part of that, right there. And this should be ready to go. Now, this time, we will do this. I'm going to kind of change this whole beginning uh, of the document. I'm going to first, well, we'll type in the, the, uh, the sound to get it started. And where do I want to do that? Yeah. The variable name, of course. Okay, uh, we can actually add some parameters here. Before we just close it off and did that, uh, what we can do is uh, let me move this in the frame. You get this first option for the uh, amount of seconds you want to offset the beginning of it. it it's not it actually uh, what that means is it's not like it's pausing to start playing. It's actually if you ever to put like ten in there. It would start the audio playing at the tenth second, okay, of the uh, of the audio file. Uh, so we don't. We're just gonna start at the beginning, so we don't need to uh, change that at all. So just put in two uh, two quotes there, just making it empty. And then, but this other one is uh, to control the amount of time it, it times it loops. So you can just put anything in here. A thousand is probably plenty, more than enough. And that's done. Now, okay, here's what we gotta change. This second frame here doesn't actually uh, won't get triggered because if you remember, we're stopping our document right at the uh, beginning like this. So let's do this. Let's steal that code from there. All right, and let's put it right here. Uh, let's give ourselves a little bit of a note here. That's uh, oops. start playing audio. Okay, and now let's do this. Let's take all these variables, our starting variables. I'm going to paste them over here, okay? And now what we're left with is these things that uh, we don't need to kind of re-trigger every time you die, okay? These, once they're set up in the beginning of the document, they're kind of just set up for good. So we don't need to re-trigger this. So what we can do is actually move level one out to there, and I'll just uh, give ourselves a few more frames here, okay? So now when you die, if you remember, you get kind of sent over here, all right? And then this loops back to level one, and it uh, won't go through this stuff again. Not that it would really hurt it to do that, but it's just unnecessary, okay? And there are reasons, I guess, uh, just thinking them out now that you probably wouldn't want to do that. But uh, for, uh, for this, this is, uh, this is good. This is a great way to do it. Now, uh, what else do we need to consider? Oh, check this out. This audio file will get restarted each time we die, all right? But it won't get stopped. So if you kind of listen to this now, uh, 
it will uh, replay over itself. Oops, how come that didn't uh, restart? Oh, you know what? My fault. The uh, the audio file has a little bit of uh, some uh, sound uh, at the end of it. I forgot to trim that out. Well, anyway, uh, I'll fix that in a sec. But if you notice, when I uh, when I die here. It's kind of playing over and over again on itself, which will get kind of really annoying the more I play that. So what we need to do is when you die, stop that audio. And that's really simple. We just go to here, and we'll say stop. And of course, this would be a good time for you to add in a, a different bit of audio that would maybe be like wah, 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 you know, like the typical death music. Uh, and so that'll be good. So now, uh, we'll of course, stop and then restart. And you know, let me even just give us a little bit more time in here so we can kind of experience that pause. So, there we go. And like I said, the the audio is looping. I left myself uh, probably two seconds of dead air at the end of that uh, file. Oops. Okay, uh, let's do this though. Let's take a look at some of the other audio. Okay, so this little, uh, this eep noise in here was uh, something I intended for when the guy uh, gets hit by the snake. So let's do this. We will just go over here. Oh, actually, I need to bring that back. And let's just copy this out. All right. And let's get into this. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and steal some uh, code here. There we go. I'll steal that. Nope. Let me steal this. Actually, that was pointless. <laughs> it's one line. Uh, anyway, okay, let's get into this guy. Oh, by the way, I did add another snake over here, and uh, this is just me fooling around my own time. And I added another one going the opposite direction. Just duplicated it in case you're wondering where they came from. Okay, so where is this hit test to kill you? All right, it's right here. Now let's do this. So we'll add that in there. Eep. We don't need to loop it at all. Let's do this too. Let's make the man keel over too. So we'll go man dot go to and stop dead. And that'll be a frame label we need to create now. So we'll click in here. We'll just turn him on his side. Let's just take this guy and let's see. What's a good one? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll take that. Okay, let's just. All right, so <laughs> that's him dead. Now, uh, you'll notice that if we were to publish this, let's do it. We don't get a lot of time to see him. And in fact, I didn't even hear that eep noise. I might not have it uh, turned up enough. Let's see. Actually, here's one way to test it. We'll take this, we'll mute this for a sec. Oh, hmm. okay. Well, now we got two problems. But, uh, well, the first one was this. And we'll get into, uh, my brain will try to work on two levels here while I figure out what I did wrong. But let's look at the snake for a second. Let's see, where is your hit area? All right, one more time. There it is. Okay. Uh, that I'll have to look into in a sec. But... 
we are just telling uh, the root document, the main stage, to just play forward. Well, when we do that, uh, when he dies, we don't get to take a look at him very long because we kind of immediately cut out at the, you know, right after that. So what we could do is just uh, give ourselves a little bit more time over here. All right. So where you could actually see him uh, writhing in pain. Oh, and that, you know what? Oddly enough, that, that solved both of my problems. So... Interesting. Oh, okay, check this out. Uh, it looks like what was going on there is the snake, of course he kept walking th over that guy, all right, so he kept, he basically kept encountering him over and over again you know, via this hit test, all right? And uh, so what was happening is it was, it was it kept restarting this sound right here. Uh, and uh, so what we kind of want to do is uh, keep that from happening. We just want it to occur once. And this is actually easier than you'd think because since we're telling our little root guy, our man to go to and stop, you know, this frame label called dead, what we could do is actually right here take away his hit area all right so that no longer exists and uh, that can't be triggered now so now let's see what happens and it does work it, my audio is uh it's kind of hard to hear the uh, what I recorded for that sound over the background music so let's uh, let me just tune that out and I'll try to turn this up Okay, that was not me making that noise. That was the game. Uh, by the way, I, I did actually pause this and uh, fix the uh, the background sound, which, you know what, I guess since we're on it, I, I'm going to try to see if this code works. Let's see. I think I can set this to be 50. Uh, I think somehow it got louder. <laughs> See what 10 does. <laughs> I might have to put that in quotes. I can't even remember that. I'm just. Hmm. Well, I will figure that out momentarily. But uh, it's funny. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's uh, let's do this. Let's figure out what the uh, what else should we should put in here, and then I'll worry about the volume. Uh, t -t -t splashing sound. Okay. Well, it's, uh, that's an easy one. It should be kind of obvious where that will go. Folks, it's the end of a series <laughs> of lessons here. I've been I've been going almost nonstop on these, so forgive me for the <laughs> forgetting a few things at the very end. Okay, uh, okay, splash. That should be ready to go. So let's do it up. And it should be obvious right here. Okay. You know, these would be actually good places to just stop the uh, background audio as well. So, you know, let's try that. That way we can kind of hear it a little bit better. So we'll stop the background audio first, and then... Okay, and again, we kind of run into that same problem where it, is, uh, where it keeps encountering this. So um, we can do this. We can just... Cheat it one more time. Okay, yeah, it works quite well. Uh, what we could do is actually move this up a little bit, even though it's not visible. Let's see if we can. Uh... Okay, yeah. And, and obviously, uh, you know, you could make a specific frame label for him splashing into the water. 
Uh, nothing wrong with that. So uh, let's do this. We will try to get one more in here. Copy that. And... This one will be for uh, kind of one shooting noise I have. And that will go in his little uh, boomerang part. So we will do that right here. Just put a frame label, root dot. Okay, hopefully this will be one that works well for this. All right, cool. So that uh, that was an easy one to do. And what else are we left with here? Oh, this was just kind of a, if you run into one of the platforms. And that should be another simple one to throw in. Let's go ahead and just do it. All right, so an easy place to put this would be, let's say, well, for the, the bricks, we could have just add it right here. That's a nice place to do it. sound in the world but certainly works and again for these guys uh, you can just do it right here where they bump up like that see that okay and uh, let's figure out what the deal with that volume is I definitely feel like the uh, that platform noise is a little loud too. All right, I'm gonna take one more stab at this. Let's go uh, root dot. <clears throat> yes, let's give this a shot. Uh, before I was just using volume, so let's see if that works. I'll copy that. Oh, yep. Okay, I'm hearing a difference. That's that's a good sign. Uh, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and put it on the brick as well, which was right there. Okay, and here's where we'll really be able to tell if it's let's see, whoops, right here. Let's set it down to ten. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, there it is. You can barely even hear the audio now. All right, good, good stuff. Let's see. Hmm, all right. So, what to do now? Oh, and by the way, uh, generally though, I think if you uh, don't like the uh, this, you know, your audio, uh, another good way of just dealing with it is to uh, change the source file. That's uh, and actually, uh, I think unbeknownst to you guys, I went and I did clip this audio file, so it uh, it is now uh, much better. It's actually trimmed accurately. So uh, okay, hmm. Uh, well, one little uh, thing we could do real quick is, you know, I talked before about, you know, in terms of kind of, I guess, winning the game or whatever. It could just be uh, making it your way to some door, which takes you to another level. Uh, another way of doing it would just be to uh, specify in here, if you collect a certain number of these little bush thingies, uh, you do get to progress somewhere else. So, let's see, how many do I have on the stage here? 
let's say if I get four of them, we will go to um, this frame label, which we could call, of course, level two, and which would, um, you know, have another level there. But for right now, just uh, to get it tested out, let's uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, easy place to just put this would be right in here, and we can say if. Say four, okay. All right, uh, I believe that looks correct. So let's give it a shot. So I got one. Let's turn the volume down. All right, so there we go. Cool, that works. That was an easy one. And what else should we do in here? Okay, here's where I think we're at. We are going to call uh, an end to most of this. What I'm going to do is uh, put, include this kind of finished uh, file right in here, okay? And I'm going to uh, make just another level on this game. I'm going to kind of include any other little minor little thing that I want to do to my finished version. I'll come back on the mic one more time just to talk about that. And uh, then that's it. Okay, here is the very last bit of this lesson. Thank goodness. All right, check this out. I'm going to publish this. Okay, here we are. The first uh, little change I've made is that there's actually a click to start uh, button right here. It's just this white box. Reason being, if you are playing this uh, through the browser window, if you've embedded it into an HTML document, you might actually have need to uh, have the user click anywhere on the screen and then uh, and only then will they be able to use the uh, directional arrows. Otherwise the directional arrows might just uh, only work for uh, you know making the uh, web browser move around or doing whatever they're doing scrolling down. So you kinda gotta force them to click inside the screen and then they should be okay to do whatever they need to do. Alright other than that uh, let's just take a look at the changes I've made up here on the timeline. So uh, that's self-explanatory, actually, just the artwork, uh, you know, this kind of pre-stage artwork. Uh, okay, let's get the action script editor up here. Uh, really, there's uh, not too much else to say. This stuff uh, just stays right here. We were talking about that before, just moving it all, uh, separating it from the actual levels. Okay, this is the same. Actually, the only difference here is um, I've just gone and put this uh, enter frame code for uh, switching the levels at the uh, just right up here on the stats thing instead of having it inside here like I had it before okay I had it like right down there now uh, what's a little bit better like this is you can copy this whole symbol over to for example over to level 2 which I've made and you can change that alright and also, you'd want to change where to uh, start the next stage. All right. And actually, in this case, it would probably be because you'd progress on the level three, which I haven't actually created. But so right now, I'll just leave that at level two. Okay. Uh, so again, just take a look at that. That's the only difference. And I am, uh, you know, kind of putting level art uh, before each stage, just to kind of tell you, hey, look, you've collected enough stuff. You got now get to progress on to. The next level. Uh, the only code here I've just put is uh, to stop the background music. All right, and it of course just starts back up again when you get over here. All right. Uh, the deal with this now is let me bring this into play. Okay, so what I've done is I've duplicated a uh, just the symbol for the platforms. All right, so I've just called this platforms level two, and again that's always just uh, using this duplicate version, not uh, or command, not uh, just a copy. Okay, 
This actually changes it in the library. Uh, the instance name, though, can stay the same. That doesn't matter. Okay, you definitely want to keep it the same. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to be moving anything around. Clouds are the same. Uh, I've just tinted uh, everything a little bit differently. Okay, and now when you get into here, of course, when we're in platforms level two, you are going to want to duplicate out everything uh, within here as well. Although, before you do that, what you probably need, want to do is to go and uh, we talked about this kind of ad nauseum in this lesson is to make sure before you duplicate that you just put this little symbol up here at uh, zero zero okay so that way it locks the coordinates in alright so um, and again nothing really changed here in fact uh, I, these little segments of the platforms still have the same uh, instance name even though they have a little bit of a na different name in the library, all right. And otherwise, uh, you know, it's it's really that's all you got to do to just uh, create an entirely new level, all right. Uh, one thing I have gotten rid of is before, if you remember, I had some uh, frame label here called like depth zone one, whatever. You don't need those, okay. And actually take them out because when you're just kind of copying everything, when you do like this, okay, and, and copy it all, copy all frames over here to this part, if you have duplicate frame labels, all right, which I had when I originally copied it over, that was a problem. They don't like that, all right. And just for a little brain buster for you guys, uh, check this out. It's actually pretty self-explanatory, but I'm not going to explain it in this lesson because and just as a little challenge to y'all, <clears throat> I think it'll be just interesting, more interesting if you just uh, go through it on your own and take a look at it. Check this out. I'm going to just go ahead and skip so that uh, I can just get right to level two when I click right here. Let me, uh, let me kill this snake though first. Okay, he's out of the way. Now check this out. When I run into this thing, my guy, he kind of like shoots back a little bit and then you can you know move forward again uh, this is a box that you can jump on alright but and again over here on this side same kind of deal he's just kinda of stuck on there he can't get through it so and it also kind of makes it seem like the uh, the ground underneath gets a little icy almost so you could probably you know also use that to your advantage so uh, I will show you though of course the uh, the code to pick through on that is right I have to zoom in to get it right there so here you go play these numbers through in your head and they will make sense it's uh, kind of uses a few things that we set up before okay and notice there are some negative numbers in here and it's pretty self-explanatory but again I'm not gonna get it into it in this lesson and uh, on that note uh, let me say this these tutorials are tutorials they're not templates this is not um, you know, I'm not selling a game here. I'm selling just the teaching materials, okay? So if you find a bug in this, it's on your own to fix it. Don't email me and say, well, you know, uh, this part, you know, you can, well, I, I, honestly, I don't care. This is, uh, this is to teach you guys how to make games. So if you find something that you don't like, uh, don't email me, fix it. <laughs> You're on your own with these things. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to sound cruel or anything, but, you know, the guy who, it's, it's talking into this microphone right now is not the guy a month from now because I, I'm going to forget all this stuff in my dreams tonight. I, I really, it's, it's, I mean, like, if you've just watched this, you probably know more about how to program all this stuff than I will a few months from now. It just, I forget it right away. And it's, you know, it's a learning experience. And, and these games are kind of, or these tutorials are the accumulation of maybe, I'd say 40 to 60 hours worth of uh, studying up before I teach it. So I know sometimes it kind of seems like I teach from the hip, but you know, I have plenty of cheat sheets on many other monitors that I look at, uh, and I just kind of progress through those. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. So if you ask me, uh, like, what might seem like a simple question, you know, well, how do I now do this? I, I really, I can't even begin to answer it without picking through, you know, half hour to an hour worth of code and, and you know researching back into what I did so again these are about teaching you guys how to do stuff so anyway uh, my apologies if you've already sent an email that's like well how do I you know but uh, that's okay and in most cases I'll just say I don't know and that's not a big deal <laughs> but anyway 
just a little uh, warning at the end. So uh, anyway, it, this has been an enjoyable one. It's probably going to be one of my favorite tutorials in the end to uh, recommend to people. It's uh, I, I love game making, and uh, I hope this sets many of you onto some sort of path, possibly even toward a career into uh, making games on your own. And uh, definitely there have been uh, Flash games that have uh, progressed into uh, the world of uh, console games. And uh, a site like Newgrounds.com has uh, a couple examples of, I think, well, maybe one, but uh, where they uh, a game got so popular there on that website that it eventually became a PS2 game. So, hey, there's hope for all of us. Alrighty, that's it. I'm signing off, and good night.